Good evening, everybody. This is Rob and Jordan. We are back once again. This is Archangel Inc. Live number 46. Jordan, how are you tonight? Rob, I'm doing great tonight. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Uh, I think this is going to be a fun, uh, fun video. And tonight we're going to be doing something a little bit different, uh, soliciting some uh, some audience participation, uh, some email list participation on uh, building a lead magnet. And so uh, for folks who are on our email list, you may have noticed, you may have seen the email where we told folks what we were up to and invited you to submit a genre. And uh, what we're going to do is kind of just brainstorm on the fly. We've done a little bit of preparation, but uh, but haven't discussed it too extensively. So uh, we kind of just want to demonstrate what the process of figuring out how to build a lead magnet would look like for a particular genre. And uh, the uh, the author who submitted his genre, is um, his name is John Schott, and we've actually worked with him previously some years ago and uh, maybe working with him on an upcoming project. And he's not joined on the, uh, the stream just yet, but we're hoping uh, at some point that he may be able to join us tonight. But otherwise, we'll, we'll kind of just proceed along and uh, chat. But Jordan, any thoughts as we start off on, on here? No, it looks like you, we just got a comment there uh, that John popped in. But yeah, I, I love this. I love thinking of ideas. Uh, you know, it's a great idea that you had to just, hey, let's let's see if we can brainstorm some lead magnets. Instead of just doing a, a basic, hey, this is what a lead magnet is. This is what you could do. We wanted to get a little bit more specific because, I mean, there are tons of posts out there that give very broad examples. And uh, the more you get down your knit, that down into your niche, you can say, uh, you, you know, you can come up with very specific ideas. So I'm excited to just chat about this. Like you said, I mean, we did some preparation, but we wanted it to be more live and to feel real. And hopefully we can give other people out there interested generally in lead magnets, some good ideas. Uh, and then specifically, if you're in the health and wellness niche, uh, we, you know, hopefully we can give you some good ideas there as far as what you can do for lead magnets. And, and we'll go into all that on this slide. Right. Absolutely. So, uh, so the title tonight, Lead Magnets for a Health and Fitness Book. And so I thought we would start off and kind of just chat a little bit about why lead magnets are important, you know, what the value of them uh, might be and, and how you can take advantage of them. So uh, what are your opening thoughts on, on that front, Jordan? So lead magnets in general, when it comes down to it, really, you know, what, what you're thinking of is how you can provide value to your audience. And usually lead magnet, magnet is free. And it's some kind of download, uh, checklist, video series, uh, some kind of online digital, usually digital for the most part, uh, digital content that you're sharing with uh, a select person that you're hoping to get something in exchange for. Now, usually what you're getting in exchange is an email list and you know, hopefully you're providing continual value to that email list. So it's not to that person through their email. So the a lead magnet generally is to start that. I, I think of it as starting a conversation, Rob. Mm -hmm. Hey, this is something I'm really interested in. And you and I and most listeners out there have signed up for email lists, maybe without knowing it sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen people online that, oh, that, that actually really interests me. That's that's exactly what I'm trying to do. You know, I'm, I'm trying to uh, start a lemonade stand or a taco stand. You mm -hmm. know, this lead magnet, this download says, uh, these are the five things you need to remember when you're starting your own taco stand, mm -hmm. you download that, that's exactly what I need. Uh, mm -hmm. Something like that. So that's what a lead magnet is. You've, you've, you've seen these before, even if you didn't know it was called a lead magnet. And they're super helpful for starting your email list and just as part of building your platform. Right. Yeah, I, I, think, I think of lead magnets as a way to... Uh, again, to kind of just deepen and, and enhance that uh, connection with your your readers. Now, a lot of a lot of folks know, especially uh, people who are uh, who are building their author business, um, it can be tough to uh, to build a, a full uh, a full time income on just a handful of books. Especially if you're if you're putting a lot of time and energy and focus into building those um, uh, those titles well, investing you know uh, adequately in in good editing, good design, you know all of all of what's in uh, what may be involved, and and then you're kind of expected to compete on Amazon selling books for two ninety nine a copy or nine ninety nine a copy or something like that. Uh, so one of the things that we really emphasize is the importance of uh, building an, a suite of of services of different products and uh, offerings that you have, so that for those people who find you and and really resonate with your with your voice with your brand with whatever it is that you're. Uh, a specialist in and, and whatever it is that you're extraordinary in, um, that they're able to 
uh, to support you further and, um, you know, and to, to get additional value uh, in turn. I mean, again, as, as content creators, um, we are tasked with providing exceptional value to the people who um, who are really gracing us with uh, with their patronage, and so um, you know we really try and keep their their needs paramount. Um, and you know, consequently, when you're building this, um, uh, you know these other sweet this other suite of services and, and products that you might offer, uh, you're trying to um, continue to do that, continue to build on that great value, um, not just in a written format or or an audio format if you're doing an audio book, but um, but in other uh, other ways as well. So you know. Like you mentioned, uh, there are a number of different options when it comes to uh, building lead magnets and what you can do, how you can um, kind of approach it and generate it. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, we can uh, kind of strategize on ways that are going to be uh, functional for ourselves. So uh, it looks like we might have John joining us here. It uh, looks like he's got uh, got himself ready. He's waving. Uh, so let's go ahead and add him to the stream. Good deal. All right. And is this John? How are you? Hey, guys? how are you, man? Good, good. Thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, thank you. Uh, hey, how's it going? Good, good. good. So John and uh, and Jordan are meeting, I believe, for the first time. And uh, and uh, John uh, has worked with Archangel Inc. previously, but um, you know, this is uh, the first time that we're we're chatting live. So it's nice to nice to see you here, John. You too, man. Thank you. Yeah, it absolutely. might be a little noisy because I have kids in the back. <laughs> okay, no problem. We'll uh, no, I'll move. I'll move. Yeah, we'll we'll make it work. Uh, so um, I'm uh, just to recap for uh, for folks uh, for you um, what we've been covering for the folks in the audience is kind of just the value of the lead magnet and how to build that out. And, and thank you, John, for responding and and offering the sort of health and fitness genre as a um, uh, as a test subject here and as something that we can kind of um, more or less on the fly. Uh, we've done a little bit of preparation, but you know, kind of want to just start brainstorming and seeing ways that um, that might work for uh, you know building. A lead magnet, something that's going to provide some additional value and allow you to uh, to capture, you know, more information, whether that's an email or something from uh, from your audience. So, uh, do you have any thoughts or anything that you wanted to share as we start off uh, off here? Um, nothing right off the bat. Um, okay, I just want to be here to see what yeah. how I could uh, benefit nope. or anything or whatever. Sounds good. Help. So, yeah, no, I, I uh, glad glad to have you on for that. So, uh, the one thing that I'd like to kind of go over here, we have a um, uh, uh, post, a blog post on the Archangel Inc. blog. It's uh, entitled "Use Lead Magnets Like a Boss." So, what I'm going to do, I'll pull this up and um, you know create a, a screen share of the um, you know what it what it looks like, and uh, just kind of use that as a as an example. Go over a couple of different um, options and things that people have have used previously. So here's the the link, and we'll include this in the description down below. But um, you know how 10 best selling authors grew their email list with calls to action. So that's kind of what we mean by uh, the lead magnet here. Um, we'll just kind of summarize real real quick. Uh, 10 lead magnets from 10 non uh, best selling nonfiction books. Um, Number one, how to write a nonfiction book in 21 days. And we include links again to all of these, but there is a, a Kindle publishing checklist. So, you know, a, a 64 point uh, review for new authors, um, you know, that fits the, the audience there and, and provides uh, something that is, is actionable. You can download it, you can print it out and mm -hmm. uh, kind of use it. Uh, you know, another one from uh, Sleep Smarter, um, 21 Essential Strategies to, to Sleep Your Way to a Better Body, Better Health, and Bigger Success. So sort of in the health and fitness genre here. Um, ask them to sign up for an email newsletter to receive more information related to the book topic. Uh, so, you know, as, as we say here, this can work if the book does extremely well. And it's a good reminder to have at least one lead magnet in the book to capture email addresses. Um, you know, uh, that said, uh, Keep in mind that the better the perceived value for the reader, the higher the conversion rate. So this is an example of something that there wasn't necessarily a download there. It was just an invitation to uh, to join the, the newsletter. Um, you know, so anyway, we kind of outline a few different approaches, checklists, workbooks, uh, access to an exclusive group or Facebook community, uh, tickets to a conference, a free copy of an upcoming title, um, so on and so forth. So I encourage anybody who's just learning about Lead Magnus to so feel free to check this out if you'd like some examples. And uh, because of the look inside feature on Amazon Kindle, you're able to actually go in many cases to these um, uh, 
these titles and you know see what it looks like um, and what they actually the verbiage that they use and uh, and so forth. So uh, anyway, Jordan, any any thoughts on any of that? No, I just think again, you know, just thinking about the the you know when you're thinking about league magnets, magnets all the things you listed right there are just ways of continuing the conversation and thinking about that you know if, if someone jumps on your website or they read your book you know it's all about that you know you're trying to give them value with that content but also just be thinking about hey what's the next level where can i go next and for me that that's maybe not an easy way but it's one way of thinking about lead magnet magnets and what they can do for just building out your business i mean it's just about that continuing the conversation continuing the value and then if you're thinking of it in those terms, it gets easier to start brainstorming and thinking of ones that you can use. Right. Cool. So uh, the next thing that I have here, uh, brainstorming for health and fitness. So uh, John, I am happy to have you here. And so this is uh, this is a great opportunity. I have your, your website uh, or your author page pulled up here and a couple of previous projects that you've worked on. But, um, but I, I guess the first question I would ask is, you know, what's your, what's your focus? Have you thought about your, your niche? Like what your ideal, uh, target reader uh, is like, what sort of interests do they have? What sort of pain points do they have that you might have solutions for? You know, how, how do you conceptualize your, your value proposition for, for your readers? Yeah, that's, that's, that's always the, the golden question, right? Because mm -hmm. <laughs> especially for me, that's, that's usually been one of the biggest challenges mm -hmm. because I've had experience in, in the wellness field for almost 11 years mm -hmm. and I could, I could work in many different uh, areas of it. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's all holistic based and all that. So pinpointing a niche uh, has been like really challenging because I can operate in many di diverse areas of it. Um, yeah. 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 Well, I think, uh, you know, one, one way to conceptualize it that I, I often think is, you know, what's, what's your, uh, what's your story? You know, how, how did you come to it? What was the, was there a particular challenge or, or, um, either health problem or situation that you overcame? that allowed you or, or that got you interested in this field that, you know, in turn, you might be able to say to somebody, hey, I know exactly what you've been through. You know, that was me 11 years ago or 15 years ago or something. And, um, you know, and that's why I started trying to learn as much as I can and, and you know, build this body of, um, of research and, and expertise. Um, is there anything like that uh, that that you can identify? OK, so the 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 main thing that jumps out is like since i was a little kid i've always wanted to help people mm -hmm. and and i've always been in a, like uh, a very self-studied uh geek kind of a person about you know improvement and and all that and there was a moment where i went to new york for film for film and acting and stuff like that but mm -hmm. it was it was really hard time in that industry it was sketchy and it was something that made me feel really bad and mm -hmm. at the same time i was working on things of uh, around self-improvement like I was listening to like the typical Tony Robbins things and all that. And the area of health came in one of his like CDs, audio uh, programs. And it was very unique and it called to me. So I went into the vegetarian world from that because of alkaline and, and diets and all that stuff. Sure. And in that, I, from there, so it, it's not like the typical health and wellness person who has, like you said, uh, an issue, a challenge in health and then overcomes it and becomes like uh, somebody who 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 teaches people be based on their experience because uh, I didn't have fortunately I didn't have any conditions or anything like that but as I went into it I did go into extremes so mm -hmm. I went extreme vegan I went extreme like too low, low you know low calorie and things like that and mm -hmm. I actually messed myself up in the process mm -hmm. of becoming ultra pure and you know right. achieving like the most immoral immortal diet and lifestyle and all this stuff and right. through that I learned a lot you know so there was a lot of wisdom gained from that so yeah. I can I guess I can I can I can play in that field of being more balanced and not working in the whole yo-yo diet extreme you know, something that's a label and, and, and things like that, specifically in veganism, because I was I was a, a militant vegan. You know, I wasn't nasty or anything like that. But, right. uh, you know, I've always been a, a nice guy. But I did I did play in that field for almost eight years, man. And I, right. I actually did a number on my body like, you know, like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So. Well, yeah, that, that's great. Thank you. Uh, so the, the things that are coming to mind immediately for me are. Um, that, that could be the pain point. So there might be people out there who are going through 
um, through plant-based diets uh, who have maybe experimented with, you know, um, you know, alkaline uh, oriented versus, you know, acidifying diets um, who, who have, you know, kind of uh, taken their health really seriously and um, caused themselves to, to kind of lose balance, go off track. Um, you know, so maybe framing, framing your, your um, brand or your value proposition of, you know, have, have you been here? Have you have you done this before? Have you done uh, you know the uh, X, Y, and Z, um, but it still didn't work, or you you totally screwed yourself up? Um, I've been there. I can help. This is this is what I've found um, to uh, kind of get out of that malaise. Yeah. Um, and, and I think also because you have gone through some of those different uh, challenges or or you know uh, philosophical orientations, um, you have the language. You know, you can speak to them. So when when somebody yeah. who's you know uh, grown up, I guess on um, you know, mac and cheese and barbecue uh, tells them, hey, vegan diets are dumb. You know, maybe they're not going to listen in the same way as, hey, I, I did this for for eight years. Like, you know, I did, I had, you know, the the raw juicing. I did, you know, raw foods. I've uh, tried, you know, yeah, all of these different things. And just kind of um, use those uh, those keywords, really. I mean, thinking about it in a marketing and SEO standpoint, um, it, it is sort of keywords, but uh, from a just one-to-one -one communication standpoint, like you're you're sending signals, you're you're throwing um, information out there to to indicate to other people, hey, I I speak your language, I know what you're talking about, you can trust me, I have credibility, and um, and maybe if you're going through these same problems, um, then then I might actually have a solution to you too. Like I'm not going to again be that that. Um, stereotypical like you know barbecue and mac and cheese person who doesn't know what you're um what you're going through doesn't necessarily even have the uh, the, the background in um you know the, the ethics of it or the environmental side of it or you know any of those different things that might be actually speak to why people make those uh dietary decisions why people become vegan why people you know go organic etc um you can you can use all of that to again just foreground your credibility and demonstrate that Hey, I have um, this particular set of uh, experiences, and um, and therefore, you know, it's easier for you to believe me. So the the example that I'll I'll give um, the the person I founded this company with, Matt Stone, he had um, uh, his website, One Eighty Degree Health, and um, he had every year he listed a number of different titles of of books that he um, he had read and so not only had he read uh, all the the books that i was reading at the time you know uh, organic and, and paleo and low carb and and you know um vegan and you know all these these uh different books but he'd also read a number of other books that i hadn't read um and you know had a, a fairly broad set of uh, experiences and and um you know he was familiar with with a lot of different topics and i thought okay, this guy actually knows what he's talking about when he's making fun of, you know, paleo people or when he's yeah. making fun of, of low carb people or vegan people. It's not coming from a place of ignorance. It's actually coming from a place of, um, you know, informed um, analysis and, and criticism. And, you know, again, it could be a little bit tongue in cheek or, or you know, kind of cracking jokes or whatever, um, just because that's his style. But yeah. but I knew that it was it was something that um, that he actually had some familiarity with. And uh, and so he he built he had credibility for that reason. So, um, you know, as we're as we're brainstorming here, I would say maybe frame it around uh, around that, you know, the the background that you had just kind of what you started out with us like, hey, this is this is how I got into it. I was interested in personal development. I was interested in, you know, uh, uh, sort of realizing my potential, you know, went down the, the Tony Robbins path, the, you know, um, wh whatever other things that that might have been relevant along that uh, that route for you. Um, and and then you you kind of just captured to uh, caught hold of this this health um, arena and uh and then and then you went and and you you learned a lot along the way and um as you were learning things along the way you realized you know sometimes you don't know where your limits are until you you push past them and so you know you yeah. kind of rein yourself in and, and do all of that so i think that could be um one approach does that seem you know uh, does any of that resonate yeah yeah absolutely Cool, cool. Um, I think uh, uh, focusing on uh, what you guys were talking about there, you, you even mentioned it too, pain points. And I think that especially where you specifically can help there, John, if there's any specific points that you've gone through before, maybe you can reach those pain points or create like a quick start guide or uh, a checklist of 10 items that you, you know, 10, mis 10, 10 mistakes I made myself that you don't want to make. I mean, you could, you could formulate it in a way like that that is very engaging because I think for health and wellness specifically, you know, there's going to be people that want that quick start that are going to jump in and want, you know, 
not to get it, they're gonna they're gonna want results quickly and then there's other people that maybe are gonna be more right along with you and hey i've i've tried these different things for eight years and you know i messed myself up i mean i've heard that before too i messed myself up with this diet and that diet maybe there's some kind of better balance there uh and then you know a lead magnet right there could be 10 keys to a, a better balanced diet or 10 keys to leave diets behind or something. I don't know. Just thinking, thinking off the top of my head there. But as far as focusing on pain points, I mean, that's, that's what I mean. I've been trying to get better at that myself and my genre. Uh, maybe that, maybe that can be helpful for you. Yeah, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. I, you know, another, another idea that I uh, just thought along those lines, thank you, Jordan, was, um, you know, 10 ways to make your vegan diet more sustainable, you know, um, are there, if that, if it's important to you, if it's, if it's an ethical thing, if it's an environmental mm -hmm. thing, if it's a, you know, a pollutant thing, um, then, you know, how are ways that, that you can maybe, um, retain your health, retain your viability, retain your energy levels, um, and say maybe mostly vegan, maybe you're vegan 98% of the time and not hundred percent of the time, but you know, other, other ways that, um, things that you can do to, to make it worse. So uh, another example would be the, um, you know, Matt uh, co-wrote with a with a, a practicing vegan uh, a book called The Vegan Solution, and it was uh, a number of uh, different struggles that that this person had uh, in terms of you know how they oriented their diet and um, uh, you know dealing with um, various different maladies. Uh, they still wanted to remain vegan, but like, what are some different principles that you can you can incorporate there? So you know, maybe maybe in your case, you know, ten signs that um, your vegan diet isn't working for you, and and you can orient it. You know, either as hey, it's okay. You, there are ways that you can you can do this and make it better, or it can be as uh, you know oriented as you know. Here are here are some next steps if you're if you're ready to move past it. You know, I mean, just depending on on what your focus might like, to, or what you might like your focus to be. Um, you know, you can kind of shift it around. Um, you know, and it doesn't have to be ten. It could be five. It can be two. It could be you know whatever. But you know that kind of checklist idea or or some sort of you know, questionnaire. People really like questionnaires in many cases. It's like, oh, that's cool. Um, maybe you can come up with um, the four different types of, you know, uh, a vegan. Which type of vegan are you? Or, or something like that. Um, and obviously, we're focusing on this uh, vegan mm -hmm. idea. Um, it could be, it could be a number of other things. It could be what, what type of, you know, um, health activist are you? Or, you mm -hmm. know, what kind of, um, you know, uh, exerciser are you? Or something like that. Um, but you know, something that's kind of engaging and that's fun, that's going to add value. But uh, but again, it's also going to allow you to, to capture some information, ideally for for some sort of email list, although it doesn't have to be, you know, for an email list. Um, but but it allows you to to bring people over to, to get them more invested in the, the value that you offer. Um, and for the people who end up becoming, you know, as Pat Flynn talks about the, the super fans, um, people who are just like, man, I I'm so excited. John's coming out with this new book. I really want to hear what he has to say. Like the new podcast is out. I'm checking that out. You know, his, his YouTube video is out. I'm, I'm there. Um, those people, you know, they might they might want ways to support you that, um, you know, monetarily. Like, hey, if he if he comes out with a course, like I'm there, sign me up. Like I'm, I'm you know, give me, let me open my wallet for it, you know, or uh, I'm ready to, he started uh, offering some sort of group group coaching, then then let's do it. Like, what, what do I have to do to sign up? Um, provide, start thinking about things that you can offer and, and provide, um, you know, additional value, more customized, more high level, uh, or more, I should say, more um, uh, specific value for your your people um, and, and bring them along into that, um, you know, into that sales funnel, into that experience so that they can have um, access to you. You know, one of the downsides when you are, are using a platform like Amazon as opposed to on-site sales is, you, it's it's totally opaque to you who your customers actually are. I mean, you can see where, like, what market they're buying it in. If they're buying it in the UK or in Brazil or in the US or something, but for the most part, you don't have, you don't know what their email addresses are. You don't know, you know, anything demographically about them. You don't know if these are, um, are people who, um, yeah, live in the same town as you or you know anything like that. Um, so when you have that email list or something else, uh, some sort of way of directly contacting them uh, and you can start utilizing that and building that, um, it gives you a way to start to tailor your your information to start building out the, um, 
you know, the products and services that you're interested in. You know, it may turn out that um, unbeknownst to you, you know, all of 80% uh, of your, your readers are um, in the Southwest or, you know, the, the Northeast or something. And so maybe, maybe you start um, using that information to, to tailor the next offering that you have. Like, hey, how do you get over cold and flu season? Because maybe it's, you know, October and, and everybody that is reading you is in Massachusetts and New York and New Jersey. Um, so, so maybe that becomes your focus or, um, you know, maybe, maybe they're, they're all in the Southwest and you think, okay, uh, you know, how, how do I, um, how do I increase my heat tolerance? You know, uh, the, the, you know, how do I avoid getting, getting burnt if I have to work outside in the sun all day, you know, whatever, whatever that is, you, you can start to get that information a little bit more if you have, um, you know, if you have access to some of, uh, you know, their email addresses, some more demographic, uh, data, um, rather than, than just having it on Amazon, um, and, and then the final point on, on all of that is, um, you know, Amazon, they, um, you know, there's no guarantee that they're going to be around forever. Um, and if they, for some reason, aren't around or, you know, if your account gets uh, cut off or suspended or something, something goes awry, um, if you have those addresses, if you have that uh, direct mailing information um, or, or some other way of contacting them, maybe it's a Facebook group, maybe it's an Instagram um, page or something like that, then, you um, you are you're a little bit more um, secure, you know, and robust in um, you know maintaining that connection with your clientele. Yeah, that makes sense. Cool. Yeah, sorry, that was a lot of uh, yeah. <laughs> a lot of different thoughts, but um, no, it was great. Good, good. Um, so you know, uh, so folks out there, you know, this is kind of what we're looking at and uh, how how we're brainstorming these ideas. You know, we don't need to come up with with a specific. Um, solution right now. We don't have to have a specific plan in place, you know, in the moment, but, um, but these are the kinds of questions that we look at and, and how we start to analyze like our value proposition. How do we, how we identify, you know, what our value proposition might be, you know, um, like, like we started off, John, you, um, I asked, okay, so, you know, have you identified your niche? And you're like, well, you know, a little bit, not really. I have a lot of different interests. And, and then, you know, as we start, start, you know, asking some follow-up questions like, okay, well, this is kind of my background. This is my story. Maybe this is where I want to focus, you know, may, and maybe, maybe you say instead, that's not, uh, you know, that's not my primary goal. It's not necessarily the the sort of um, people who have gone through the health ringer and and come out the other side. You know, maybe uh, you know, maybe you're you're focusing on um, on some other area where you're you're just building your experience. You know, maybe you just found um, you know some some new type of exercise or you know some new health regimen or or protocol or something, um, and you really want to jump into that. You know, and and in that case, maybe you're maybe your value proposition is, Hey, I'm a, I'm a long-term, uh, health enthusiast. You know, I've got, uh, you know, a decade plus long background, um, in health. And, and this is why, you know, this new area offers a lot of promise and, you know, kind of approach it from, from that perspective and, um, and foreground, you know, your, your background, all the things that you've been through, your trials, tribulations, whatever are, uh, the sort of the context and the pretext for all of that. But, um, you know, you, you might want to focus it somewhere else. Um, so for folks out there, again, you, it doesn't necessarily have to be your uh, your background. It doesn't necessarily have to be the specific pain points, although th those are very helpful and they often can be the, um, some of the most effective uh, areas of commonality. You know, if, you, if you're talking to somebody who's kind of where you were, you know, six months or a year or a decade ago, um, uh, there's, there's a level of uh, rapport that is relatively... Um, easy to build there. And so, uh, so you can do that. And, and that's, that's often why we recommend that, but it doesn't have to be that, you know, and, and that's kind of, again, just what we wanted to, uh, to convey in this brainstorming session, you know, what are, what does it look like? How do we, how do we start building that out? Because when we go to an author for the first time and, and say, Hey, you know, what do you, we think you should build a lead magnet, you know, um, good luck, go for it. You know, they might say, well, well, shucks, that's great, but I have no idea where to start. I don't know, you know, even how to begin building that out or, or conceptualizing it. Um, that's why, you know, we have this, um, you know, we're, we're doing this live. Just, we don't know all the answers. Obviously, Jordan and I mentioned, um, we we had some notes, but but we weren't really preparing. You know, John, uh, we're just talking to you for the first time. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, this this is kind of what the process would look like and and hopefully that's um sort of helpful for for folks out there um either of you gentlemen have any uh any thoughts on on any of that 
Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna jump in there, Rob, and say, and another another important facet to considering league magnets is not to not to think too big. And I definitely have a problem with this sometimes. I want to create like the next big thing that's gonna solve all the world's problems. But I think the most effective lead magnets can be really simple things that don't take up a ton of time. But if you're thinking something really, really small and specific, you know, people are going to potentially eat up, uh, literally eat up like a, a, a guide to the best smoothie you've ever made or, or something like that. Uh, something that's really quick and actionable uh, because that's going to if, if they do go and download that and then they do, do actually take action. Uh, and they find a benefit from that, they're going to remember you. And that could potentially be huge. So always be thinking that it doesn't need to be like a 10 hour course. It doesn't need to be an entire ebook. That's, I would not recommend that as far as a lead magnet goes. You know, if, if you're going to write a book, you know, spend time writing it, make it good and sell it. Uh, do something shorter. That's just a quick win for people that, uh, you know, people are going to be okay with giving you their email for uh, and whatnot. So don't be, don't think about it as a, is too big of a thing. It can be very simple and very specific. And the more, the more it is both of those things, I think the better it's going to be, the more success you're going to have with it. Yeah. Great, great insight, Jordan. Uh, th thoughts on any of that, John, anything you wanted to, um, to actually, for sure. Yeah, actually, I'm glad you said that because one of the things I wanted to like ask or learn about too, is, you know, we all get like these huge, like, uh, sales pages with lots of claims and all this stuff and mm -hmm. they just seem very like uh pushy and and mm -hmm. and cheesy and and also like very like non-authentic mm -hmm. and and i think i think like one of the things that i would personally want to aim for is a is a lead magnet that's actually authentic and mm -hmm. that shows that i'm actually really interested in 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 helping the person more than anything you know and right. not like oh i got i want to i want you to sign up so i so you can so i can sell you something i mean yeah we all have to make a living and at the end of the day that's very important um but also just to make it in a way that <clears throat> it seems authentic and honest and and conveys mm -hmm. who you are so right. yeah right. I think I think with that, you know, just as I'm thinking off the top of my head, I think you know, I, I feel that you're. I mean, I I've never met you before, but I get a sense of authenticity just talking to you, and I think that's something to consider too. If you have the ability to make a short video or a video, like a short video series, you know, if you can do that, I mean, you're still gonna have to build a landing page and and do all that stuff, but you could you could have a video be a focused part of that. You know, if you want people to connect with you with that authenticity, then that might be an idea. Uh, a video a video course or i mean yeah it wouldn't have to be to super in -depth or if it was just you know you wanted to give a guide of you know how to make that smoothie that we talked about i like that <laughs> one. I'm, i think i might use that one the guide to hey. the best smoothie you've ever made that's actually I'm pretty not, good because so <laughs> <feel it. laughs> i have some some ideas on that Definitely. i want it i want to make it for sure send it to me <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> i will yeah, no, I, I think that's a great uh, that's a great point, Jordan. I think one of the other aspects to it, uh, you know, we talk about you know some of these checklists or offer to join the email newsletter or so forth, but but part of it is finding something that's going to uh, to speak to you as as an individual author. You know, we have um, we have a, a lot of different options, but how can we play to our strengths? And you know, as you mentioned, Jordan, you know the the um, sincerity that that you demonstrate john and and like hey i just want to help people i don't want to take advantage of people i'd, I'd like to obviously you know uh, make a living and provide for myself and my family and all that but but i'd like other people to um to get value out of what i'm doing and and not take advantage um you know i think that does come across well so you know having some sort of um video or, or audio content or something that allows your your personality to come through and uh your um, your integrity to to be foregrounded um, that can be really helpful. You know, I mean, there are, there are some people uh, who you know really love being in front of the camera and and who re or really love being behind the microphone. Um, other people are, are just wordsmiths. You know, they love being uh, behind the keyboard and and writing things. But the idea of getting in front of a camera is not their cup of tea, and they don't want to do that. But um, you know, all of that is um, you know will depend on the individual. There are a lot of uh, different arenas and paths to take. You know, I think one of the the ideas of of soliciting this feedback and you know give it give us an example of a genre and we can kind of explore it on air in real time um, is is to show that 
it will vary and and there is a, a general big picture aim and big picture um, structure to you know these these lead magnets these calls to action and so forth but um the implementation uh is myriad there are lots and lots of different ways that you can approach it and uh, lots of ways that you can build that authorship business uh to connect with your your audience you know the way that you connect john with your audience is different than you know how uh, how i connect with my audience how jordan connects with his audience you know how uh, matt connects with his audience and you know everybody's got their own um their own particular brand and, and part of uh, you know building building that up is is finding what really speaks to you and and it might involve trial and error you know you might you might do a, a bunch of of video casts and realize hey maybe this isn't you know this isn't what i thought it was and, and i don't love it or you might uh, you might find that this is exactly it. Um, you can try a, a number of different things, and I think it's important to remain um, broad-minded and and sort of lateral in your thinking about different possibilities. You know, as long as as you're um, continuing to focus on on how you can uh, put it into this the bigger superstructure of of your business and and your brand. And again, I say I uh, you know I mentioned brand and branding, and and there is or there can be this negative association of oh yeah that's just like some you know, a uh, sleazy uh, salesman or something, uh, but but it's more than that. It's about it's about your character. It's about you know who you are and you know what you bring to it. And uh, for anybody who's who's creating content, who's publishing books, who's you know creating you know videos, anything like that, there's there's something that's calling you to do that. You know, there's something usually uh, that is. Um, noble about it, you know. Okay, maybe maybe you really like being in front of the camera. Maybe you have some, um, you know, uh, ego based reasons or something. But uh, but what's underneath, you know, uh, like what what is it that that um, you can bring and that you can offer to people? And um, if you can start to connect with that a little bit, um, that can be instructive. And uh, you know, we we talk about this on the channel and you know in some of our content. Uh, once you have a sense of your why. Uh, the what becomes much easier uh, to implement. You know, you have a purpose, you have a, a direction, and you know it provides a, a sort of north star to your your action plan. Um, hey, what am I trying to do? Like, and then anything that you think about doing, uh, you know, okay, maybe in your case, like I want people who, um, you know, to to be able to achieve the, their best health possible. Um, okay, cool. What am I doing? You know, I'm thinking about building an email list. I'm thinking about doing a, a video series. I'm thinking about doing a podcast. Yeah. Is it is it helping that? You know, and if it isn't, then you can know if you if you have identified your uh, your north star, your purpose, and um, you know your target audience, and and what you'd like to uh, do for them, and and that in turn will clarify um, whether something's worth pursuing or not. Or if you're struggling through it, it might help um, provide the, the motivation to, to kind of push through because you know, hey, it's serving a bigger purpose. Cool. Um, Good stuff. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So uh, so we, we don't have to chat for too much long here. I just wanted to give a shout out to, uh, to Mojo in the audience. You know, she mentioned, uh, you know, that what you were talking about, uh, John, Sometimes these these lead magnets they can sound too good to be true, and that's you know that's not what you uh, not what you want. Certainly not what you specifically want, but in general, you know you you want to come across as as honest and and foreground that integrity. Um, and uh, she also mentions don't put all of your eggs in one basket. Uh, so yeah, there can be a number of different things that you can try uh, that that might help out. And you know if if something doesn't work, that's okay. You know you don't you're not necessarily going to get it right the first time. As long as you remain flexible and and like Jordan says, you know you don't have to. You can keep it sort of uh, simple and see what people respond to. You don't have to do a ton of um, you know preparation or or you know invest everything into uh, one particular strategy. Uh, but instead, try it out. If people respond to it, that's great, and you can keep uh, keep moving forward. Um, but uh, but yeah, yeah I, Rob, think I think the more you can test, iterate in in that way, the more you can uh, you know, especially if you are doing you know the the less in depth and the still good but short time frame, you could do it. And if it totally flops, then what? Maybe at best you wasted a couple hours, uh, mm -hmm. and then there was some time and implementation. But you can, okay, that didn't work, and throw it out, try something else. Versus doing a really in-depth thing first, so yep. uh, I think there's definitely room there if you do think specifically. You know, you have a list of ten ideas, you could just start going through them and see what see what sticks. Yeah. All right. Uh, cool. Well, I, I appreciate uh, appreciate you joining us, uh, John. This is this is cool. And um, you know, just to, to wrap up, you know, the value of lead magnets. There there are way for you to 
add additional value, deepen your connection with your audience, and, and then ideally, you know, maintain some sort of direct communication, build some sort of direct communication so that your business is more resilient and that the people who really who really ex are excited by you and, and love uh, what you're doing are able to uh, to get more of it as you continue to produce it and, and you know, build on your uh, your business idea. Anything else that you wanted to, to uh, say, Jordan? Yeah, I was going to say one last tip with your lead magnets. If you do have an audience or social media or something, uh, share your newly created lead magnet with your list already, especially if it fits. Uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna make something new, you know, think about offering what you just made to uh, people that may may not see it, may not go to your site and sign up. Uh, but it's just another way of giving value back to your people, uh, and that could be that could give you some initial feedback too. If your list loves that, uh, really, you know, the best smoothie ever. Hey, that. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna put some more work into this, and I'm gonna put that up as a lead magnet. So just an idea there. Uh, that's something I've been doing more and more. In you know, as I'm continually making things, just make sure I'm sending those to my my people too, and and as a, as a nice thing to do, but also as some feedback. Yeah. Definitely cool. Uh, well, John, thank you for for joining. Did you have any other any other questions or or thoughts that you wanted to share before we wrap up here? No, man. Thank you. This was this was pretty great, and I appreciate you guys having me on and. I look forward to learning more from from you and our potentially upcoming project. It's, it's I have a good feeling about it. It's good. Great, great. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to it as well. And uh, yeah, thanks, thanks, John. Thank you, Jordan. And folks thanks. out there, yeah. If if you're if you have questions, comments, if you enjoyed this, if you'd like to see more of these, we'd love to hear about it. And uh, yeah, definitely feel free to to leave any uh, responses and and smash that like button and subscribe and do all that fun stuff that uh, that YouTube uh, that tells YouTube that. We're doing good stuff here. So uh, yeah, John, thank you. Thanks again for for joining us and everybody. Thank have you. A great everybody. evening. Goodbye.